in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. A small boy walked into the grocery store, walked right up to the clerk and said, Do you have any Advent? And the clerk looked at the little boy and said, What? Do you have any Advent? The clerk said, I don't think so, but why do you want Advent? Well, said the little boy, my mom says, before we can have Christmas, we have to have Advent. And Advent is represented by four words. Four words of love, peace, joy, and hope. And Advent is the time when we get ready for the coming of Jesus. It'll be a couple weeks before we have the coming, his first coming in Bethlehem. His coming secondly into our hearts in our baptism and in our working with him through his holy word. And finally his coming at the end of time. All are referred to as Advent. We have, come, we have to wait a few more weeks for Christmas like I said. But we don't know how long we have to wait until he comes the second time. All we do know is that we learn to wait for his coming by being with him every day in his word and in prayer. Now those four words of Advent, love, peace, joy, and hope, St. Paul puts three of those words in the blessing he gives to the Christians in Rome. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. So, for what do you hope? Or if you're from Chicago, what do you hope for? You put the preposition at the end. There is one kind of hope that really is just a wish. As, Christ, as Christmas approaches, many are hoping to receive presents. They may or may not get them. Hope, that way we normally describe it, is usually just optimism. But what does it mean to hope as a Christian? True hope, Christian hope, is grounded in God's deeds and his promises. St. Paul says, Christ became a servant to confirm the promises God gave. That is the basis for real hope, for Christian hope, the hope you and I have in Jesus Christ. Christians, though, if they're not careful, can succumb to a false kind of hope, a kind of faith that is mere optimism, a belief that everything is going to be okay. This is a false faith, and it gets quickly dashed when the rough calamities of life come. As we wait in hope for our Lord's return, we can become weary and discouraged. Life is filled with all sorts of unexpected troubles and things that we never imagined when we started out. Once we were filled with hope, but the way things have turned out, is that what we hope for? No couple getting married ever hopes for divorce. Parents of a new baby do not hope for discipline problems. As we go about our daily business, we never imagine that around the next bend is a car that's going to smash right into us. Is this what we hope for? How can one be a Christian in the midst of such things? Is being a Christian just being optimistic, hoping for good things to come later on, maintaining a cheerful disposition? Be wary of such a notion of hope, and hope not in yourself, that somehow your good works, your good deeds, your interior sincerity will someday pay off. Hope in yourself is destined to fail. To hope in ourself is to make ourselves our God, which is the worst sort of idolatry. Hope, without an option, something or someone to hope in, that sort of hope will fail. With a false hope, you and I will end up hopeless. 
We might be sincere, but we will be sincerely wrong. Christian hope is not a wish. To hope as a Christian is not simply to want everything to turn out well. Christian hope is complete confidence and sure conviction. How can you have such hope? Well, you can't find it in yourself because it doesn't come from you. You must look outside yourself to God and his mighty acts and all his promises. That is why when Paul begins to talk about hope in the reading, he points us to the Holy Scriptures. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. What things in scriptures? Consider the many saints who in the midst of suffering had endurance, which we can also think of as patience. Every trouble you have in life, be it with money or family or health or whatever, it all comes from a more fundamental malady, our total sinfulness and depravity that mars every human relationship, that sickens and finally destroys every human body, that warps and twists every human mind away from God our Heavenly Father. Long ago, the Lord gave his promise the promise that a man would be born to overthrow the diabolical serpent who spins lies against God's holy word. A man who would crush the serpent's head, put him to death, and destroy death forever. The Lord gave his promise, and he fulfilled that promise in the incarnation, birth, life, death, and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Christ became a servant to confirm the promise God gave. Risen from the dead, he gives us reason for hope. Hope that one day we too will rise from the sleep of death. Hope in the for forgiveness of sins and freedom from that sin. And hope for eternal life in heaven with God. Still, we are so impatient, not able to wait for anything. That's why we need Advent. Advent cultivates in us the discipline of waiting, not only waiting for Christmas, but also waiting for the Lord to fulfill his promise. In all of your troubles, the Lord is cultivating in you the discipline of patient endurance. The Lord comes on his time, not yours and not in the time of the world. Still, there is another reason why the Lord has not yet returned to judge the living and the dead, as we will confess in just a moment. The Lord does not relish the thought of judging and condemning anyone to hell, those who are unrepentant. Thus the Lord waits, earnestly desiring all to turn from sin and call upon him for help. To those whom the Lord has brought to true repentance, God gives reason to hope. Not just wishful thinking, but a real, fundamental hope. As he fulfilled his promise in the past, by his mighty deeds, so he will fulfill his promises to you to forgive you all of your sins, to raise you up from dust and decay, to clothe you with his holiness, and to bring you to everlasting joy. Any parent or grandparent who has come to faith and heard the call to repentance and heard all of God's promises, wants this also for their children and their grandchildren, and they will intentionally teach their children and their grandchildren, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the children will believe when they hear God say, I give you my promise, 
You are mine. You belong to me. All the words and all the promises of Scripture apply to you. In the midst of the most hopeless life, the Lord promises reason to hope. In the midst of the most painful death, the Lord promises to raise you out of the sleep of death into life. Only in Christ is there any hope, and that hope is not just wishful thinking. Now, what should that produce among us who have been given this hope? The Christian hope is this, that first of all, it produces Christian worship loyally together. Secondly, Christians live in peace with one another. Christians seek to live together in peace in their families and with their neighbors, being patient with one another as God is patient with us, and being harmonious toward one another. That is, not allowing arguments or disagreements or fights to turn us away from one another or even turn us away from the Lord our God. Rather, we seek the power of His Holy Spirit, working through the Word and the Blessed Sacraments to fill us with joy and to fill us with peace through Christ as we live this life together. Yes, we are having Advent, as the little boy said to the clerk in the grocery store. We know that Christmas will come, and that Christ will come again. But for the time being, we patiently wait, abounding in hope, abounding in joy, and abounding in peace by the power of His Most Holy Spirit. Amen.